Um, so basically this session is just for Q&A. Um, yeah, if you have any extra questions following the, uh, the keynote this morning, then uh, feel free to ask Ram. Fire um, away. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> leave it with you. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, obviously all the, uh, support, the supporting class today was really good. Um, but in Asia, there's a couple of important clouds that weren't covered. So you, you, obviously you covered Google, didn't have AWS, so they you had Azure. But in, in Asia, um, you know, you'd have like Ali would be one that would be on everyone's list that they would be trying, or certain parts of Asia anyway. So have you got any comments for us on some of those Asian cloud providers that we can just cover off? Yeah, if you, can, if you look at the slide that Forrest had in the partner ecosystem, it actually has Tencent and Ali as well as part of our Fortune Epic okay. partner ecosystem, and they would have instances as well as usage with Fortune Epic. So okay. absolutely, yeah. Well, we, well, we plan. I don't think that's on. That was on the. That was on that. Yeah, Huawei Cloud. Yeah. Huawei Cloud. Yeah. So Tencent and. Um, um, but that's just a representation. We work with a lot of cloud providers in in the, uh, in China as well. Um, but those are the two that, for sure, are in the Fortune kind of partner and customer ecosystem today. We expect most of the cloud providers to adopt Epic, uh, Fortune Epic. If you think about, I mean, the economics of what we described applies to everybody, right? So, yeah. Okay. So yesterday, so Kevin explained so GMI three narrow and wide, but uh, you know uh, below thirty two core, so uh, you can possible so na uh, na not only narrow but also wide as well. So which skews so support uh, so wide connection? That is a great question. Which skews are wide versus? We can take that and follow. I don't have to talk okay. on the top of my head, but we can we can follow on that. But, uh, so you know all. Not all no, thirty two no, SKU no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. So just a depend on the SKU. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. Go ahead. Jasmine from Singapore. Sure. Yeah, so just have a quick question I think on uh, yeah, okay, actually two questions. I think the first is actually I please correct me if I'm wrong. I understand that uh, because this uh, it's a question about the uh, about the the manufacturing process, right? So I, I think it's mentioned just now that it's on a TSMC five nanometer node. I recall in yesterday's briefing, it's actually there's it's actually a hybrid. Right? There's a five and six, and then am I wrong? Sure, no, no, you're right. Both are right. <laughs> okay. There, there's there's two kinds of chiplets in the in the in the in, the, in our CPU. Mm -hmm. The first is what called the core complex chiplet, mm -hmm. that's made in five nanometers, mm -hmm. and the IO chiplet, the IO die, is made in six nanometers. Um, and those are packaged together into the product. And you got a second question? The second question, I, I suppose, is um, I'm just I did a bit of reading up, right? So I think overall AMD is making good gains, right, with this uh, Epic series. And because I think obviously it's just doing so much better than the comp competition, right? So on, on, on that backdrop, basically, yes, it's growing. So I'm just wondering, but it's not quite. I, 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 from what I understand, it's also beat like previous records set by the Optrons, the previous server series. But uh, it hasn't quite reached a point where you know, it's dominating the market, so to speak. So I'm just wondering, what's the AMD strategy right, for really reaching up to the rest of the market and really just boosting the market share? Frankly, it's, it's a soundbite, right? How you're going to get the market because you have such a competitive product now and we don't know how long this window will last, right? <laughs> well, our, our strategy is to continue to drive kind of leadership in general purpose computing and that will be the kind of the tailwind that continues to push our gains in the market. And if you look at what we're attempting to do, we're attempting to deliver that performance and we are delivering that performance across the broad swath of customers. So that would be the, kind of the vehicle for us to achieve those gains. But a market share gain means so you must contract with TSMC much more. We have, we, yeah, <laughs> we, we absolutely we have a very close partnership with TSMC, uh, and um, yeah, we can we can supply as much as we so use. supplies uh, so next year so you could increase our supply. We, we do not foresee an issue of supply for for Chenepic. Yeah. So I think just now during the uh, session we were quite 
I, I think there's a lot of confidence, right, in the supply situation, and we know that there's a crunch in the whole semiconductor uh, industry. So basically, that's how, how, how should I put it? Just that is, is this something that AMD is very confident about that supply is not going to be a problem, no matter the demand, and the demand is going to be great, right? A lot of people are going to upgrade. Will supply not be a concern? Yeah, supply is not a concern. Uh, yep. So just, just on that, um, I know that uh, I order things off Kickstarter and uh, Indiegogo and they're always late and they always blame the Ukrainian war, the logistics and of course we know in U Ukraine we're supposed to be delivering some sort of uh, neon gas that is uh, essential in making processors and obviously uh, AMD and T TSMC are far from uh, uh, you know, a Kickstarter project starting off and having small supplies but they start talking about how we have all the stock now, we've started production, you know, they're trying to assure you that there won't be delays, which there always will be. So, I mean, you've obviously been planning for this for some time. So, did you work with uh, TSMC to, to get all the sort of stocks in advance? Is it sitting there waiting, ready to go? Um, because that's, that's the key concern. If you want this upgrade cycle to be a super cycle, you've got to execute and promise and deliver. And, uh, and you obviously are very keenly aware, but what's the tiniest bit of extra detail on how you can assure us of supply? Oh, well, that's a great question. So I, I think the way to think about it is we have a very close partnership with TSMC, uh, and we are confident in our design and our ability to work together with them to supply. I think what we can do though is connect you with our kind of supply chain okay, or, or an expert there. I am a product guy, yeah, yeah. so I, I, I'm not totally privy to the, the the details of how exactly the supply chain sure. the logistics get organized. It's but just we can that, get you that in 2022, someone being able to supply on time is a rare thing. It's a good mm -hmm. thing. So mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is it possible to get any sort of sound like on uh, Asia Pacific perspective? I mean, I'm from Singapore, so I'm just wondering whether there's any sort of comments that we can make with regards to the market in the whole Asia Pacific region. I think, I mean, maybe the it, it is a broader comment, but it, I think it applies to everybody. If you think about the the need to do more with less, everybody's budgets are crunched, uh, and if you think about um, where the global economy is and where the energy prices are going everywhere. I heard a statistic that we were, we were, we were using 5x in the Germany case. Mm -hmm. Somebody was telling me 22x in Sweden, which is astonishing. Uh, it may not be quite that, but I'm sure it's high in, uh, in, in Asia as well. In that environment, what you can get for a unit of energy becomes very, very important. Um, and I think that's where Fortune Epic's efficiency comes into play where you can get the performance at a very, very nice uh, efficiency. So your consumption of power is lower. That drives lower, um, lower costs for you. I think that another part that may apply is, uh, I think as Asia continues to grow, uh, there's, there's also concerns about just environment in general, but also footprint, right? You can't just build whenever, wherever. Uh, last, I mean, I, I, I go through Singapore quite a bit. It's not like you can just build anywhere. Um, the ability to get more performance for a given footprint is actually incredibly important for dense areas like that. So if you think about uh, the example that I was showing yesterday, you can get twice the performance in the same data center. So you can service more users without building an extra data center, which you can't afford to do anyway because there's no room to do that. I think those are all things that play specifically to that, uh, to that market. Uh, there are a lot of exciting announcements with the vendor partners that you've worked with. Okay. Um, uh, so Microsoft, HP, the big ones, and then, well, Oracle and VMware as well. Um, so I don't know if you're actually, this place I should answer this, but um, should we expect to see more of these sort of vendor, um, vendor, vendor uh, collaborations, I guess, just in terms of, you know, kind of getting the tech to be better placed with the new Epic chips and stuff like that. Oh, and um, are we going to hear anything at least on the uh, channel side of things as well? Uh, sure. Partner. I, I think what we've been able to share is really what you can do in a keynote kind of setting. Yeah, right. uh, as Forrest said, uh, you had a list of partners that are not on stage with us. Sure. You look at, there's a very broad ecosystem of partners, including channel partners, 
who are collaborating and on board and pushing the, the platforms forward. Um, and there's, uh, I think, probably press releases. And if you go to our launch page, all of them are listed. Uh, and not only are they listed, you can go to their uh, websites as well to talk about what they're doing specifically for Gen Epic. Yeah, and I, I guess that what I would say was, um, uh, uh, is there a pipeline as well more coming, coming up as well? Yes, of course. Okay. There, there, is, there, there is a continued pipeline of that, sure. absolutely. There'll be growth of platforms as well as instances. Do you know what sort of uh, global marketing you're going to be doing? Is it through the uh, IT publication? I mean, we're all here to, to report on it, but um, you know, how will you be marketing this uh, through the channel with your partners uh, in the global media, online, etc., over the next uh, coming weeks and months? Sure, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of an all of the above. <laughs> um, so I, I think we, we are excited about our own ability to get the message out uh, into the into the market, but I think that what excites me even more is our partners' amplification of our message. Uh, if you think about all of the commentary in the keynotes, they're all hitting the same points that we've been articulating, uh, and I think that's the force multiplier that we're gonna bring out in terms of just get the awareness out across the board. Uh, and, uh, and that applies to just MNC type customers as well as channel customers. If you think about the, the ability or the need to do more with less. I mean, there's, it's such, such a foundational thing. Paramount. Yeah, yeah that's such, such a foundational thing. Yep. Now, also, you um, had Dr. Lisa Sue sort of giving a bit of a sneak peek into the upcoming additional versions of the fourth genetic. What can you tell us in brief about what's coming next with the other versions? So we have a we have a, a family of product lines that we've talked about. Uh, Genoa, which is for Gen Epic, which, uh, targeting the general purpose compute, Bergamo for Cloud Native, Genoa X for technical computing, and Sienna for Edge and Telco. So uh, I think today we've disclosed the timelines for that in the next level of granularity. So the first half for Bergamo and Genoa X, second half of 23 for Sienna. Um, we're very excited about them. So um, hope come back for, that, for those launch events. <laughs> Looking forward. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, and, and as Lisa said, we're. We're thrilled about what we're seeing about Bergamo in, in our labs. On the uh, power consumption, uh, which obviously is like a massive part of your message, is there is there a certain element though of um, uh, how do I put it? You know, like field of dreams. If if you build it, they will come. So it's like you're gonna bring down power consumption, but the thirst for compute is gonna keep keep growing. Now this is not your fault, obviously, right? right? Sure. But what I'm saying is is um, <coughs> in in practice, is this really more a race to keep getting things down because power consumption is going to go up no matter what because of a thirst for increased compute? I think compute is going to continue to rise for sure. Yeah. But the efficiency of the compute is going to rise with Epic. That's the essence of it. So you're right. Meaning, yeah. But the way to think about it is uh, it's a bit of a, a scenario, right? If you have a, a cloud service provider that wants to now service, let's say, a million users and they decide that they need a new data center to do two new data centers to do so. Now, instead of that, with Epic, you can do it with one data center. That is actually savings. You're right. But it's, it's not savings from going from three to two today, but it's going from four to three tomorrow. But is um, the uh, how do I how do I phrase this? The increase in efficiency. Uh, well, well, are you dri are you driving it faster than the thirst for more compute? So, so is it do you do you see a net decline in power consumption from data centers, or is that's that unlikely? That we should drive. I don't. I can't do that off the top of my head. Yeah. But I think that's a great question in terms yeah. of uh, what is the data center consumption of power across time. And is there a bend to that curve? I think that's something we should do, yeah. Another way of looking at it comedically is, are you the first company that openly wants to have less power? <laughs> I, I think we want to be the company that delivers the best efficient performance. Yeah, I'm just being so, yeah. so I think that's all, you know, uh, you are uh, 2019, uh, you know, a big second gen, so launch. And uh, differences between this and uh, today, so it's a little bit so, CSP hyperscaler is a you know a more important so in your launch event. I, I looked at that so and could you give me a so you know um, your vision and me a market mix you know a CSP so and hyperscaler and a, so a, OEM so and a, a channel as well so 
I think we need to probably look at our financial uh, mm -hmm. disclosure from Q3. We'll be able to follow up. I don't have it off the top okay. of my head. So, but we can follow up on that. I'm not sure what granularity we disclose, mm -hmm. but we can we can just follow up on that. But CSP is also more more important. Than no, I, I think we okay. We target all of our uh, mm -hmm. all of the segments, right? So uh, across the board. And if you mm -hmm. looked at, I mean, we have four OEM partners on stage yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, really executive suite on, on stage, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a really strong testament mm -hmm. uh, to the momentum that we have. I actually think that the momentum that we have in the enterprise is the exciting one. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the testimony from um, uh, Raghu Raghuram from VMware, mm -hmm. that's really exciting to see. So. Okay. okay. Yeah. Although you still have to, still have to pitch vSphere 8. I told everyone to buy it, but anyway, um, the the other thing that came across from the keynote session was um, that it, it, you know the the ease of the ease of upgrade mm -hmm. and sort of saying that you're expecting to see replacement quite soon. So this is another question on on, on uh, how you're measuring that because um, have you looked at the the maths of the economics to see whether or not um, it actually makes financial sense to do the upgrades now, or whether come, or whether like data centers and cloud providers are going to still want to write down their investment in in, in, in existing hardware, uh, because the way that it was described was going to go for it now, but it, it's whether the economics work. I think. You think about. Uh, I think the generally accept expected lifespan of a server in a data center is. I think five at the outer outer yeah. outer range. If it's something that's being used twenty four seven, a kind of full tilt, um, and so it, the the refresh cycle is not. It, it's almost it, it's there just because of that. And if you think about the state of that, right there, I would say they're not only inefficient in terms of power. I would characterize them as brittle, because this is something that came five years ago, and who knows what soft kind of uh, security patches have been applied to date. Uh, there is a there is a security concern with that. There's an operational concern with that, and just the efficiency of the footprint concern with that. So, the upgrade cycle comes naturally from the life of the server. But when you're when that's upon you, right? What what, what are the choice A or B? Uh, and choosing B, which is kind of epic systems, is phenomenally better. And it could could it trigger the upgrade? Maybe, because you can just get a lot more done. So, um, neighbors, Roma and uh, uh, Milan. So you have the same so socket, so uh, SP, SP3. So, however, this is this is this time. So you have new introduced yes, section yes. SP5. So uh, SP5 is also so you know a s future compatibility. So in the next one, next one, next one. So what is about that? We haven't disclosed the future roadmap, but mm -hmm. uh, I think our philosophy is to preserve the investment of our partners. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Today, just we're focused on Genoa, but you're okay. correct. Gen Genoa, uh, unfortunately, Epic is a new socket. Uh, philosophy is pretty similar, so okay. Understand. Stay tuned for the future. Yeah, okay, yes. okay. <laughs> I want to say we're Genoa today. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because I need a message for customers so, of you. So yeah, philosophy is the same. It's uh, pretty good. So okay. Now um. One of the uh, the problems of the modern era is that uh, you know we have roadmaps and we know things are coming. You know, you know, every year there's going to be a new iPhone, and people are keeping them for a bit longer because they don't want to spend another two or three thousand dollars year on year. I mean, what's your message to all the data centres out there who who are looking at this and thinking, well, I want to hit the button, but what's AMD going to launch next year? Isn't it going to be even more in incredible? What's sort of the, the, the reason to upgrade now? Stick with that for the next five years rather than waiting for the inevitable improvements in the future that always come. Yeah, I, I, I think that the, the reason to upgrade now is quite simply that combination of performance and energy efficiency. If you think about that moment in time where the energy costs are so steeply rising, uh, it, it's just made, the, the, the product is made for this. It's made for this. And. Um, it's obviously different for every single uh, data center operator out there. They have different footprints, different uh, everything. But you know, if you take a typical data center, whatever that might be, how long would it take them to upgrade you know, everything if they were going to do that? 
uh, is that months, is weeks, days? Yeah, if you, I, that's, a, that's a good question. It really depends on the workloads that they're running. But I think the, the data point that Forest showed is actually very instructive. If you think about five servers uh, with 380 VMs, migrating them to one server, it's less than an hour. If you think about, if you multiply both sites by 100, it's still less than an hour, <laughs> right? Uh, and I, so I think it's, it's, it, it can be done very, very seamlessly. And, and of course, yeah. data centers aren't necessarily going to operate everything at once. They'll Correct. do it bit by bit by bit. Yeah, rack by rack or, or a whole, whole day, one data center at a time. But I think that math kind of scales directly. Yeah. So. But it would be fair to say your OEM partners have, have data centers ready to be starting to be switched on from tomorrow, you know, with upgrades. They have the platforms and yeah, they're, they're in customers who have yeah, uh, data centers, yes. So today, Kak so you know, uh, water cooling so system so uh, of Lenovo. So it's a uh, yeah, pretty interesting. So and uh, could you give me uh, your vision for water immersion solution? So uh, in the Epic side, because you know uh, your competitor has also their you know different design. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, there? we work with our partners to enable those designs. Mm -hmm. I, I think there is a uh, from an architectural point of view, we mm -hmm. aim to hit the sweet spot of the majority of the market, mm -hmm. which is continues to be air cold. Uh, but we for sure mm -hmm. have multiple partners who are building uh, uh, liquid and immersion cooling systems for uh, better thermals and better performance, and we happily support them. I see. Yeah. Okay. okay. Got one more sure. Yeah, just um, when um, Charles from Super Micro was on, I, I didn't quite understand one of the points he was making, which I think was an important point. Uh, it was right at the start, and he was talking something about the it was, it was like the speed with which you could get more products out. Do you, do you remember what he was saying on that? And sure. you can't get it. We can, we can follow up though. I think. Yeah, I think we can follow up with Vic actually. Yeah, yeah. Vic would yeah. be. Vic was around actually, but I don't yeah. know he left. So. Yeah. 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 I think it's just really to take. Uh, of course, AMD is an x86 player, right? Yeah, but of course now, like just like with many things in life, that's whole. Um, mm -hmm. competition on the other side of the pond, right? Yeah. And I think, for example, AWS is quite big on ARM, for, for instance. So what would be your message, right, to potential customers across different segments of the chain, right? To Our message is very experience. simple, that we are targeting the best performance for general purpose. Uh, and we believe that Fortune Epic is the best performing general purpose processor that spans all of the workloads across market segments. Sure. Um, <laughs> that's not that's not, yeah. um, uh, Another big uh, uh, another another thing that was mentioned in keynote was uh, supercomputers and um, the big deal you know, in research and stuff like that. So, what are the sort of uh, opportunities that you could see from these new chips? That like, what are the sort of uh, use cases that you've kind of come across from these uh, laboratories and stuff like that? From sort of calculations that they can do and stuff, and interesting that you can... You yes, can it's actually cool. it's across the board. Um, it spans all of scientific computing, right? If you think about, uh, I showed the data on weather forecasting, so there, there is a nat kind of national labs or supercomputing oriented workloads, which would be genomics, which would be molecular research, which would be cosmology, um, and, and, up, and from there you, would, you could think about national defense oriented use cases in terms of simulations. And then you look at commercial uh, HPC, which is kind of the crash simulation and the finite element analysis and so on. So that's the beauty of the architecture and the product that we have is across those, it delivers just head and shoulders about performance. So, yeah, absolutely. Gentlemen, thank you so much for traveling and coming here. Uh, we enjoyed having you and uh, it, you can of course tell we are very excited. Uh, we're excited about your excitement as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, well done. Yes, <laughs> yes. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks.